The reason is money is toxic. After 1971, people who work for money are getting poor because the way your wealth is sucked out of you by the Fed, by the U.S. Treasury, and by our government and our school system is the people that work for money get poor. The people that save money get poor. And the people that invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs, they're temporarily rich. But in a flash, they can lose it all. If you're going to be educated, a person has to know the difference between credit and debt. And, and that's why I mentioned the demographics, because the average person is not smart enough to handle that. All money today is credit. It doesn't exist. Credit is very simply the power to spend. That's all it is. So when you have a credit card, there's no money in that thing. They've just given you the power to spend. And the moment you spend it, you create debt. Hey everyone, this is Stefan from Project Life Mastery, and I'm here right now with Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the number one personal finance book of all time, known as Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book that changed my life. I know many of you guys know of that book and probably read it. Uh, today we're gonna dive a little bit into Robert's story and also talk about his newest book called Fake, Fake Money, Fake Teachers, Fake Assets, How Lies Are Keeping the Poor and the Middle Class Poor. So Robert, thank you for the, taking the time. Thank you. Do you mind sharing with my audience a little bit about your story and about yourself and the, the rich dad, poor dad story? Yeah. Well, Tatiana wants to know if it's a fake story. No, it's a real story. <laughs> no, I, had, uh, I grew up in Hawaii, fourth generation Japanese American. Um, my poor dad was a head of education for the state of Hawaii, PhD, Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern. But I call him, um, I used to say PhD stood for poor, helpless, and desperate mm. because our schools teach us nothing about money. So when I was nine years old, I just raised my hand and I asked my teacher, because I went to a rich, a rich kid's school. I was a poor kid, I went to a rich kid's school. And I wanted to know how come they were rich and I was poor. And the teacher said, well, if you stay in school, you'll be rich. I said, don't BS me. I mean, you know, my father's a PhD and he's broke. And she'd go, no, 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 you stay in school. I said, no, don't lie to me. So I kept raising my hand and she finally said, she finally blurted it out, you know, she was like church lady on Saturday Night Live or something. She goes, the love of money is the root of all evil. And they said, maybe evil to you, but I'd like to have some, you know. Yeah. So it's a lot of that attitude. And um, so I went home to see the old man, poor dad. He's a good man, you know, six foot four for Japanese, he's fairly tall. Uh, good father, great husband, but he knew nothing about money. And so I kept asking him, I said, when are you going to teach me about money? When's the school going to teach us about money? Then he blurted it out too. He says, I can only teach what the government lets me teach. And money is not one of those subjects. And that was kind of like my first wake up that education was uh, brainwashing, I can say. So I never did well in school. I'm mean, going to have a college degree. I went to a very good school, did all the stuff. but well, I didn't learn anything about money. And, uh, I just started studying with my rich dad when I was nine, and he taught his, his son and me, my, my best friend, about money playing Monopoly. And uh, so we all know the formula for great. There's many formulas. There's a million ways you can go to heaven. You know, there's so many ways you can get rich today, so many. And, uh, but there's also more ways you can go to financial hell also. Right. And uh, so anyway, he just taught me playing Monopoly. So today I own 7,000 rental properties, five hotels, oil wells. All I do is play Monopoly. So it's not that hard to be rich, but you have to have good teachers. And as you and I know, there's a lot of fake teachers out there. So that's why I wrote the book, Fake, is because our school system's fake. We have fake money. The Fed prints as much as they want. And we have fake assets, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. I don't touch that stuff. But the average person should. But I don't save money, and I use debt to get rich. I also, in fake, I write about the infinite return. Whereas if the higher your financial IQ, you don't need money. So if you need money, uh, you're not using your brain or something, you know. Because it doesn't take money to make money. And that's one of the biggest lies they tell you. So since 
1973. I've not had to, I, I can make up, I use debt. I use my own money. I just borrow money to get rich. And this guy's like Dave Ramsey, a good friend of mine. And he says, live debt free. Well, that's good advice for his audience. That's why I was asking, who's your demographics? You know, are they smart? They're stupid? They're rich? They're poor? Are they educated? Not educated. But so many people want to get rich, but they have horrible teachers. And then they work for fake money. The US dollar is fake. They print, they print trillions of it every month or day. You know? And then you buy these fake assets. I don't touch that stuff. But the average person should. So that's why demographics and a person's desire to be rich is probably more important than their education. Yeah. You know, we talked about debt. You know, oftentimes people in society, they look at debt as bad. Um, do you mind kind of sharing what your mindset is around that? You know, there's a good debt and bad debt? Well, it's, if you're going to be educated, a person has to know there's been credit and debt. And, and that's why I'm asking the demographics, because the average person is not smart enough to handle that. All money today is credit. It doesn't exist. Credit is very simply the power to spend. That's all it is. So when you have a credit card, there's no money in that thing. They've just given you the power to spend. And the moment you spend it, you create debt. And then a debt is this contractual agreement that you'll pay it back. Now the trouble is, most people ain't paying it back. Look, look at the student loan crisis we're in, which was brought about by Obama. I'm not, I'm not Republican or Democrat, but the student loans used to be with the big banks. Today, with, they're with the US Treasury. And the US Treasury started taking in student loan debt, giving them credit, and now student loan debt is bigger than the subprime crisis that brought down the market in 2008. That's financial education. Now I know I've seen a video of yours where you talked about you know every I think historically every ten years or so there's been a crash and every ten years and anticipating one's coming. But what could someone do to I guess educate themselves, prepare, and take advantage of a potential crash? Well, what's wrong with a crash? That's what that's what people don't understand. Crashes are really good. Yeah. You know, crashes are basically like Neiman Marcus having a sale. Right. Right. So in two thousand eight when the markets crashed, they also lowered the interest rates. I thought I died and went to heaven. Mm. That means I get my debt cheaper. Yeah. So when the markets crashed, my partners and I borrowed 300 million bucks and we bought more property. Wow. And so 10 years later, it's now, we're now five, almost 600 million in debt. We just passed half a billion. Right. But we get very rich off of debt. Right. But that takes financial education. Right. That's why I created the cash flow board game. Yeah. Cash flow is the only board game that encourages you to use debt. If you don't know how to use debt, then follow Dave Ramsey's rule of live debt free. Yeah. Or Susie Orman. Right. So the good debt is the debt that makes you money that you're investing. More than that. Okay. Debt. You know, debt is power, man. Yeah. Money is money is credit today. Yeah. 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, the US dollar became credit or debt. Yeah. And the average guy doesn't know that. Mm. There, money doesn't exist. It's only up here. So what are some of the key mindset differences you found between the rich and the poor? Well, less, what was lesson number one in rich dad, poor dad? Rich don't work for money. Right. The reason is money is toxic. After 1971, people who work for money are getting poor because the way your wealth is sucked out of you by the Fed, by the U.S. Treasury, and by our government and our school system is the people that work for money get poor. The people that save money get poor. And the people that invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs, they're temporarily rich. But in a flash, they can lose it all because mm -hmm. they, they, they don't have an education. So that's why I can ask the demographics. Uh, I generally speak to different groups, but primarily my groups are very well-educated entrepreneurs. Yeah, and you know we're here at an event called SellerCon, and you're actually you're talking about selling, the most important skill you said for entrepreneurs. Do you mind talking a little bit about that? Well, sales equals income. Yeah. You know, if you can't sell, you have no income. So I said, well, I don't have any income because you can't sell. It's yeah. that simple. So what I'm going to say to these guys is, my poor dad. You know, he was very disappointed in me because I was a pilot, 
And he wanted me to get my MBA and then fly for the airlines. And I said, then I'm an employee. And then I wanted to become an entrepreneur. So my research says, number one skill of an entrepreneur, you've got to sell. So the only job I really had was with Xerox. And because Xerox had a sales training program, that's the only reason. So I became number one in sales for Xerox. And then I quit and started my first business, which was the nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business. And I sold the hell out of that thing. The trouble is I sold more than I could produce, which got me in trouble. So it's a good lesson, you know. So my poor dad was very upset because so I, you know, you're a salesman. I said, what's wrong with being a salesman? He says, salesmen are crooks. That's the academic teacher, the elite academic mentality. And I said, well, and that's where we're, we're at war today with the elites, you know, who are the real crooks, like the Clintons, Obamas, and those guys. Then you got my buddy Trump, who's hated. He shouldn't say what he says, right. but that boy knows how to sell. Right. That's why he's winning. <laughs> Although I hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd love to talk to you. You know, there's so many different investment vehicles, and you know, you love real estate. You mind talking about? No, I don't love real estate. That's the mistake okay. people make. I love debt and taxes. Okay. If I have real estate, I can borrow as much money as I want, and the more I borrow, the less I pay no taxes. Right. So it's not real estate. You know, it's just debt and taxes, because money became debt or credit in 1971, and the more debt I have, the less tax I pay. Mm. It's just, I, it's, it's the law. And so, you know, people say, you can't do that. I say, no, you can't do that, but I can. Right. And that's the difference. Mm. So it's not that I love real estate, I just love debt, and I don't want to pay taxes, legally. Right. Trump doesn't pay taxes either. That's why he won't show his tax returns, because the American people go nuts. <laughs> Right. So I'd love to you know, ask you about your new book. What inspired you to write it? Well, fake is really the uh, graduate school for rich dad, poor dad. That's why the market is very small for fake, a little bit more sophisticated. And, rich, and fake starts in 1972. I was, flying, I, was, I was flying off of Vietnam, and Nixon took the gold, dollar off the gold standard, so my co-pilot and I decided we'd go look for gold. We didn't know what gold was. Americans had never seen gold. So we flew behind enemy lines, which proves Marines aren't that bright. <laughs> and we went looking, went to a gold mine to buy gold. And this little Vietnamese woman, you know, I don't think she went to Harvard or anything, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't discount the gold. So let's say gold was 50 bucks that day. It was 35 a few months earlier. So it was going to 50. And so I said, I'll give you 40. She says, get out of here, you know. And I, went, I realized something, she was teaching me. She was one of the best teachers I ever had because she was teaching me about money. Uh, the same lessons my rich dad was trying to teach me, that money is fake, gold is real. So anyway, I, didn't, I, you know, I almost, got, we almost got captured that day. But anyway, we, I, we sailed, a carrier then sailed to Hong Kong and I bought my first piece of gold. And this was 1973, no, 72, 72. And I paid about 50 bucks for it. And today that Krugerrand, the South African Krugerrand, is worth 1,500 bucks or 1,450 today. So did the Krugerrand get bigger or did the dollar go down? Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So ever since that day, I just saved gold and silver. And I call gold and silver God's money and the US dollar fake money or fiat currency. Now there's cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and that's going to cause, I'm not an expert at Bitcoin, because I don't have to be, because I don't need money, but it's going to cause havoc because it's going to give the, the Fed a lot of trouble because a lot of people are shifting to crypto right now. So everybody can make crypto. I don't know what the big deal about it is. You know, you can just produce your own now. So they're competing with the Fed and these guys. So it's, that's what fake's about. But the most important thing in fake is I write about the tax law which most people don't know about. But I also write about how I create infinite returns. I don't need money. And so the moment, and that's what the financial education I went through, is I can go anywhere and make money using debt. I can use other people's money. So since I don't need money, I save gold and silver. And that's kind of my MO. And I don't touch stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs because 
That's amateur's money. Right. Only amateurs touch that stuff. Right. And that's why I stay out of it. Not, if, if you don't know any better, stay in it. Yeah. Mm, it's fascinating. So we'll make sure to link to Fake as well as other uh, books from Robert and his ca cash flow game too, because that's one of my favorite games I've played. But we'll link all of that below. Uh, so make sure you guys check out his books on Amazon. We'll link to his website, Robert's YouTube channel as well. But Robert, thank you so much for taking the time. No, thank you for doing what you're doing. Really appreciate it. Thank it's you nice, very much. nice to see the young guys coming out. You know. <laughs> yes. Trying to share the message. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, give this a thumbs up and we'll see you again in the next video.